The end has come. The end of human history has already been written. There are no surprises to God, and there are no surprises to those who understand what God has revealed. No man knows the day or the hour, as the Scripture says, but we do know the season we're living in. It is obvious that Christ is coming soon for His church. We live in a fallen world, a world that has been marred through and through, corrupted, tainted by sin. All history has been a battle against the effects of sin and the effects of the curse on humanity and on creation brought by God because of sin. Be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. And what our Lord says about the future is horrendous. According to the Lord Jesus, the future for this world and its inhabitants is very, very tragic. Then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall so great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now you can be wonderfully saved and a good Christian, but be walking in the dark, because you haven't used and availed yourself of the light of prophecy. He said, I want you to know the end of all things is at hand. It's right at hand. We are not headed towards some humanly engineered utopia. We are not on the way to an age of peace and tranquility. Both calamity on the earth and religious deception will reach epic proportions. There will be famines, there will be pestilences, there will be wars, there will be rumors of wars, there will be even signs in the heavens. All of these things will begin to increase along with a religious deception aimed at the professing church of Jesus Christ. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. There are going to be hard and difficult times, and Peter describes those times. Mockers and scoffers are going to come. There are going to be those preaching deception in our churches. There are going to be preachers of covetousness and materialism. The first thing we talk about is, Jesus says, in the period between his first and second coming, the period in which we now live, there will be dominating deception. Deception, a false Christianity that will outstrip the real Christianity. There will be more false Christians than true ones. There will be more false representatives of Jesus Christ than true representatives of Jesus Christ, and they will accumulate and escalate until finally the last form of Christian apostasy takes shape in the time to come called the tribulation. Now, Satan has no need to deceive those who already belong to him. The deception is going to be aimed at the church, the professing church of Jesus Christ. The casual believer, uh, the sincere believer, those who attend church every week and those who attend only casually, there's a deception coming. And it's already here, but it's going to intensify in the coming days. Secondly, our Lord said, disaster is to be expected. Verse 9, you'll hear of wars and disturbances to warn of the coming hour of persecution. The Holy Spirit is my witness. This convention tonight is being warned here and now of an intense hour of persecution for all spirit-filled believers. You're to prepare to be hated, rejected, maligned, and ridiculed. Paul tells us in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that the final and ultimate act of mankind's rebellion against God will be when a satanically indwelt man sits in the temple in Jerusalem. There will, the temple will be rebuilt. Most likely you and I will live to see this. Thirdly, he says, the distress of persecution will come. Before all these things, they will lay their hands on you, you who profess to follow me. They will persecute you, delivering you to synagogues and prisons. That was the Jewish persecution, bringing you before kings and governors. That's the Gentile persecution, all for my name's sake. 
It will lead to an opportunity for your testimony, so make up your minds not to prepare beforehand to defend yourselves, or I will give you an utterance and wisdom which none of your opponents will be able to resist or refute, but you will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death, and you will be hated by all on account of my name. And I told you that some have counted as many as 70 million professing Christians having been martyred since Jesus said these words until now. In this vision, I saw five terrible calamities coming to America and the world. First of all, a worldwide recession caused by economic confusion. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. That's a promise for God's people at the close of the age. The glory of God will shine upon us. This satanically indwelt man will sit in the temple, he's known as the Antichrist, and he will declare himself to be God. That's the ultimate act of mankind's rebellion against God. This period of time between the two comings of Christ, characterized by religious deception, by natural catastrophe and disaster, and by persecution of the people of God. These are the realities of history. They are facts of history. Jesus said this was how it would be, and this is exactly how it would be and how it is. Number two, I saw nature having labor pains, supernatural signs and changes that can't be explained by men. And in the midst of the dense, dense darkness that is surrounding us on all sides, that is covering all nations, those who have a heart for truth will come out of the darkness to the people of God to seek the light. But don't expect the darkness to end. It will continue and it will grow deeper. But the light will get brighter. Man left to himself what was wrong a year ago is right today. And what's right today will be wrong next year. And it's always good becomes evil, and evil becomes good. Set your watch by it, folks. That's the way it works. When any society falls away from God, that which we knew was evil becomes good. That which we knew was good becomes evil. The worst form of religious deception comes in the last seven years, and the last three and a half in particular, before Christ returns to set up his kingdom and to judge. The worst natural catastrophes happen in that same period of time yet in the future and the worst form of persecution as well. So these things at their maximum level will occur in the time known as the time of tribulation. I see his labor pains in nature which are going to become more and more frequent and more intense the closer we get to the birth of the kingdom of God. I saw major earthquakes coming to the United States. I saw worldwide famine, especially in China, India, and Russia. I saw the world's food supplies completely dwindled and millions starving. He said that at the end of the age, the angels will come forth and sever the wicked from among the righteous. The wicked will be bound up in bundles and cast into the fire. The righteous will shine as suns in the kingdom of their father. But bear in mind that right up to the close of the age, the wheat and the tares will be growing up side by side. And that's not speaking about the, the pagan world. This is speaking about professing Christendom. This time of rebellion is going to be preceded by a falling away, Paul said, of many who had most likely professed or at least had some inclination towards being followers of Jesus Christ. I call it the finish line of a race of deception. There has never been a time like the time of tribulation that is to come in the past and there never will be a time like it in the future. It is the worst of all times. Verse 21, Matthew 24, there will be a great tribulation such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now nor ever shall. I saw coming a new kind of cosmic storm appearing as a raging fire in the sky leaving a kind of vapor trail. Tornadoes, hailstorms, floods, and hurricanes are going to pound the earth with such intensity and violence that all of mankind is going to have to admit the world is under supernatural siege. Revelation 22 verses 10, 11, and 12. He, the angel that brought the revelation, said to me, 
Do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He who is unrighteous, let him be unrighteous still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. That's a remarkable statement, since it comes from God. God is saying, in effect, if you want to be unrighteous, go on. You don't have long, live it up. If you want to be filthy, be still more filthy. But if you're righteous, be still more righteous. If you're holy, be still more holy, because this is the parting of the ways. I don't care how devout you think you are or how strong you are in your natural mind or body. There's a day of darkness coming and deception that nobody apart from the Christ within us will be able to get us through this. And in that time, all of these things, deception, disaster, and persecution reach their pinnacle. Now, our Lord also says that when they begin, they are the beginning of birth pains. Number three, a flood of filth and a baptism of dirt in America. I see the prophecy of Nahum coming to pass in the very near future. God said, I'll pour abominable filth upon you. This means triple X-rated movies on cable t television after midnight. This means R-rated movies within the next few years on network television. This means our newsstands are going to be flooded with such filth that Playboy magazine will look like a puritanical piece of trash. And then Jesus says in the next breath, Behold, I am coming quickly. My reward is with me to give it to everyone according to his work. So this is immediately before the return of the Lord. The wicked and the righteous side by side. The wicked getting more wicked, the righteous getting more righteous. And let me say, in the spiritual life, there is no standing still. You cannot remain static. You have to be going either forward or backward. When the truth of Christ is proclaimed and people say, well, I, I, didn't, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up to, to be a declaration of God's life in the midst of a hostile environment and generation. I, I, I came to Christ because I thought it was going to better my life. And now you're, you're, you're intimating at least that the path that you're on, I'm going to be on. Under seven seals, there's a scroll that is rolled and then sealed and rolled and then sealed and rolled and then sealed. So it's sealed seven times. It's the way they sealed a will. It's the title deed to the earth. Christ is going to take the title deed to the earth, unroll it, take back the earth from the usurper, Satan. Every time he breaks a seal, another judgment is released. So you have the seven seal judgments. When he opens the seventh seal, which is the last at the end of the period of seven years, out of that seventh seal comes seven trumpet blasts. Number four, rebellion in the home. I see the new number one youth problem in America and the world as hatred toward parents. Luke 21, 25 through 28, speaking about the close of the age. There will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and the stars. On the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves rolling. Men's hearts failing them for fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven will be shaken. The whole globe is going to be shaken. Those are more rapid fire. They all occur at the time of the seventh seal, which is right at the end. So you have seven trumpet judgments that come right at the end. Out of the seventh trumpet come seven bowls that are poured out in judgment, and they are even more rapid fire than the trumpets. So you have that same birth pain intensity escalating in the imagery of seven seals over a period of seven years, seven trumpets over a period of months, and seven bowls over a period of days and hours. Number five, a persecution madness against truly spirit-filled Christians who love Jesus Christ. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. That's the coming of Jesus. Now this is what he says. Now he's speaking to his disciples. When these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. The end time strategy of Satan is clear. It's to divert those who are trying to find refuge in calamitous times by presenting a myriad of false Christ options along the way. And then at the end of the bold judgments, all judgments are finished. Christ comes, judges the ungodly, and sets up his earthly kingdom. 
Now, it was Jesus himself who told us to tarry for a Pentecost. Jesus himself told us the Holy Ghost would fall upon us. Jesus himself promised us power from on high. But it was also Jesus Christ himself who predicted persecution was coming for all true spirit baptized believers. Jesus predicted it. In Matthew 24, beginning of verse 7. For nation will rise against nation, that's ethnos against ethnos, ethnic conflict. Kingdom against kingdom, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pangs. You see? There is tribulation now. In this world you shall have tribulation, John 16, 33. But there is coming a great tribulation. That describes that last seven years, and most particularly the last three and a half of the last seven Wickedness will then be at an all-time high, and it will be expressed openly and without restraint. The Holy Spirit, who restrains evil in the world, will step aside and let evil run rampant. John 15, 19, Jesus said, If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of this world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world will hate you. Remember the word that I said to you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. Here is another one. So, you want the baby? You have to endure the birth pains. There's no alternative. And then Jesus says, and there's a series of then. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Who's you? Didn't hear you. That's right. You is us. Verse 11, Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And believe me, the world is full of false prophets. And a lot of them are inside the church. We won't go into that. I'll just make that statement for you to ponder on. And so, in that time of great tribulation, there will come an escalation of judgment that will make it clear that you are at the end. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Do we see lawlessness increasing in the world today? Yes or no? I don't think anybody would say no. At that time, Matthew 24 says, when these judgments are released, when iniquity one runs rampant, when believers are persecuted. And by the way, when a revival is going on across the world, people are being saved. Israel is, will be saved at that time. There will be a great revival in the city of Jerusalem, Revelation 11. There will be 144,000 Jews converted, identified in Revelation 7 and 14. Multitudes from the whole world are identified in Revelation 5. Satan will rebel against that and bring about the greatest persecution in history. That persecution will cause some people to defect. There will be professing false believers in that period who will defect under the heat of persecution. Others who will defect under the influence of lawlessness. Matthew 24, Jesus said, because of lawlessness or iniquity, the love of many will grow cold. In other words, they won't want to abandon their sin. The brother shall deliver up the brother to death, the father the child. Children will rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. He shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved.